After being adopted as a baby, our next guest decided that at the age of 27 it was time to track down her biological mother. Well, Katrina Palmer was overjoyed when she was finally reunited with her birth mum, but it came with one painful condition. Katrina's existence was to remain a secret from her mother's family and friends, a secret that remains intact over 15 years later. Well, Katrina has detailed her story in a new book and she joins us now. Welcome, lovely to have you here today. You. you were told at six years old, weren't you, that you were adopted. And you said that you sort of had this feeling of, 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 of being, feeling a bit lost, really. Yeah, so Why was that? I was told on my sixth birthday by my mother that I was adopted and it was a really extraordinary moment and I remember it very vividly as a child. Um, I knew up until that point that I was special, that um, it was something different uh, to me than my brother and sister, but that moment cemented this feeling of grief mm. and loss uh, for another mother that I didn't know. And you yeah. said that it was uh, p formed a part of your life. There was always a piece of the jigsaw missing. And it was when you were doing some work, because you're a journalist now, you live in Washington, but it was when you were working in Bosnia that you found that piece of the jigsaw. Absolutely. Um, I started off my career in human rights. I was working in post-war Bosnia, helping an organisation exhume mass graves. Oh, and it was a obviously a bizarre job and very difficult, but I was surrounded by relatives of the missing, surrounded by mass graves we were exhuming daily, but also the relatives. And it's not that I can compare my story to people who've lost loved ones in a war, but there was something in their grief and in their desire to, to relocate the missing part of them that set off, ignited this need in me. And it was at that moment that I decided I need to find the missing part of me. And it was a process that happened relatively quickly. Like once you decided that you wanted to find her, you went to the correct agencies, you were assessed, and six months later you started contact through letters with her. Absolutely. I mean, it was shockingly fast. I had expected to wait years, um, but very, very quickly we were in contact. Uh, I went through the agency that had originally brokered my adoption. I started in March. I was put on a waiting list in June and then one month later they had found her. Wow. And because I was in Bosnia and not in Dublin we had this in retrospect this wonderful six month period to exchange letters and mm. to get to know each other that way before we actually met in person. And then you finally met in person and she was surprisingly as you say emotional the fact that, uh, that that there you were and she'd had you found out she'd had other children um, and and the moment of the birth of the first other child tinge with sadness because you were the ghost in the room, weren't absolutely. you? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, that always makes me sad when I think of that, um, how subsequently her life and her life with her children has been tainted, as you say, Philip, by this spectre of, what, of me. What were the circumstances of, of her giving you up for adoption? Well, at the time in Ireland, it was untenable for a um, woman who was unwed to have a child mm. outside of marriage. It was just the most shameful thing that could occur. And my birth mother, Sarah, once said to me that I could have committed murder and it would have been easier mm -hmm. than, than this awful uh, stigma. So you would think that once you were back together again, she finally found you, this ghost. Uh, you were there, you were okay, you were successful, you wanted to be with her, that that would be the start of a wonderful relationship. And in part, it, 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 it was, you got to know each other, but she insisted that it remained and remains a secret. I had anticipated when I set off on that journey that the worst thing that could happen was, well, there were two worst scenarios, that she was dead or that she would not want to meet with me. So I was overjoyed when she herself said, now a part of me is complete and she welcomed me into her life. But it became clear early on that there was a condition to our relationship that I would have to, and she said at the beginning, temporarily keep me a secret. And so I agreed to that because... You thought it was temporary. Yeah. And there was this moment where you met in a hotel and you went to walk up to her and she was there and then she walked straight past you and blanked you because she recognised someone behind and didn't want them to see you and put two and two together. Like incredibly painful things that you say, you describe it as, as, as if you were having an affair in a way. Absolutely. You, the secret. And I, I worried about calling the book an affair with my mother because I thought some people would find that you know repugnant or but it felt like an affair mm. because we met in secret we 
you know, text each other clandestinely. I don't know where she lives. I can't knock on her door. I can't mm. call her for fear that somebody else might be in the room. So it it felt to me like an affair. Um, and it was the best way I could describe it. And I'm not alone. There are so many others like me. Did she, did she tell any of her other children? Um, she recently told uh, two of her children about me. And uh, the sky didn't fall. They were overjoyed. Oh, really? Um, my new uh, sibling, uh, my new sister, when Sarah approached her to say, I have something to tell you, thought she was going to say, I have cancer, yes. you know, I'm dying. And yet it was this joyous moment. And that day, my sister, and I had been told this before by Sarah, her one wish was that, her one desire was that she would always have a sister. She has brothers and had no sister. Wow, so gosh. for yeah. her, it was a wonderful moment. Yeah. Communication has sadly slowed down enormously. You say you'll contact her for Mother's Day. Um, if she was watching today, she'll know who you are. Nobody else knows. But what would you say to her? Um, I would tell her that I love her. Uh, this has been a very hard time writing this book. Um, it's the hardest thing now, putting it out there. I'm so worried about her. I wish her nothing but happiness. Um, and this, I love her very, very much. Do you think you'll always be a secret? Um, I hope not. I hope not. Um, and I hope that my story will give courage uh, to her and to others, mm. that they can come out in this new Ireland and, and talk about these issues, because nobody's really talking about them. Okay.